Um, good morning. It's good to be back, like I said before. Um, Bethany and the kids stayed behind trying to pack our house, get rid of our junk. Not my tools. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, trying to get everything, you know, everything cleared out and thrown out or sold or you know, whatever we're going to do. Um, so they stayed back. And, and they get to spend time with family and friends up there at the same time. Um, but this is kind of strange for us. Uh, being sep- everywhere that we go, of course the kids are homeschooled, so everywhere that we go, here, you know, the whole family, all, all ten of us. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'm going to hear about that later. <laughs> but no, it's, 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 great to, it's great to be back. And, and to get to, you know, get, get going on this ministry thing. And um, I laid out a challenge last week. Lori's right. Uh, and if, if you, if I can get your attention and, and, and just take a look at that uh, sign up there. Are we, here he comes again. He's starting to step on toes. Okay, there we go. Our mission is to serve as a mission's gateway to the central Rio Grande region and to the rest of the world. And if we go to Acts, uh, our vision is to fulfill the Great Commission and Act and Acts 1.8. Can somebody tell me what Acts 1.8 says? It's okay, you can speak out. Anybody got it? You can read it. Whoever's got it. I got King James. That's all right. Now, it says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea. Yeah. Yeah. So, as we ponder that, as we think on that, act and our statement over here. What are we doing as an individually, right? This is a call to the individual, and then as a church. Um, Man, I thought we were done with this two weeks in a row. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna stay there all day. Okay, just, um, just a reminder. We do have children's ministry, youth ministry. Um, I, I don't want to step on the the uh, worship team's toes or anything here, but I mean, a drummer, a guitarist. If you think your days because you know you're a little bit more advanced in years than some of us, um, if you think, oh, I've done what I've done and I'm going to chill. Oh, you wouldn't use the word chill. Sorry. Um, <laughs> now, we can benefit from experienced voices. When, when we look at the Old Testament and the passing of the guard from the people that were in charge till their last days, there's no retirement in ministry, I'm sorry. The retirement is with him. So, um, there is going to be a time coming. I keep hitting stuff. I'm just... Do um, you remember the bull in the China cabinet comment that I made? Some, there you go. Uh, We are going to get organized, and this is going to be a group effort, and we are going forward, and we are going forward with the gospel, and we're going to reach this community. And it starts right here. Um, We have been forgiven for much, and we have a treasure. Jesus talks about how precious this is. 
like a man going through a field, and he finds something in the field, this great treasure, and he buries it, and he goes off, and he sells everything that he has. He sells everything of his former life, goes and buys that field, and gets the treasure. Do we understand that translation? Do we understand what he's trying, what he's trying to say here? That illustration, I'm sorry. It's worth everything. And we set aside our former life for the greater good of the mission that we've been given. So we're going to let you know, hey, there's a, we're going to do this. We're going to fill out a sheet or we're going to do, you know, trying to fig, figure out giftings, strengths, weaknesses. We're not just going to play to our strengths. We're going to bring our weaknesses up. We, but it's going to take some work. And so, okay, I've said enough today about that. We're moving on to our um, section of scripture for today. We are in First Peter. Oh, by the way, um, because I am by myself this week, I want to get to know you. So I'm going to have a little bit of time on my hands. I'm not just looking for free food, all right? It's not just... <laughs> But, hey, a cup of coffee, Coke, if coffee is not your thing, a glass of water, whatever. Um, I'm going to be at my office. You can come to the office and meet with me. I was planning on doing some tile, but Tommy said no more. Um, but I'll still be around. And please come visit. Let's talk. Let's get to know each other. Um, don't, don't stay away because I'm going to put you to work. Come. Um, it, I am interested in and your history here, your history as a Christian, and what you see, what you envision, ideas, creativity, I mean, all of that, because we want this mission to get accomplished. And so, um, I'll buy, if you're afraid of paying for my food. Uh, but I'd like to get to know you, not just this week, next week too, because she's going to be gone next week. Uh, but, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, to visit with you, and, um, and let's get to know each other. Um, having said that, let's dig into our passage for today. We are in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Now this, it, it, this is, can be a dangerous passage of Scripture. Um... Let's read first, and then we'll all pray together so that the Lord speaks to us. And we can see this through what God was revealing to Peter. And not my own political views or anything like that. I, I, I don't want ever to, for this pulpit to be me laying out my political biases. or anything. I'm going to preach from the Bible... And let that say what it's going to say. And we can't argue with what's written, right? It's written, and, and we're going to abide. We are going to abide. Okay? Are we, are we in it together? All right. Verse 13. Be subject for the Lord's sake. That's very important right there. For the Lord's sake. To every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors as sent by him, by the emperor, as sent by him to punish those who do evil, criminals, and to praise those who do good. It doesn't always go that way. But um, for this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people, Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Let's pause for prayer. Lord, we thank you, um, God, for the work that you've already started. You, you get... All of the credit, God. And we want to honor you for what you've done in our lives already. 
um, as we think on our walk, um, our Christian walk with you, Lord, that the great things that you have done, that we can sit with people and tell them, you should see how God did a work in my life. Um, and the great things that you will do. God, be with us this morning. Speak to us through your word, God, that we may get it clearly and that we may have discernment about our actions and how we should carry ourselves in accordance to your scripture. We love and we worship you, God. That my opinions, Lord, I pray, that would be set aside and that you would speak clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, there is a tie between Christianity and, and, and political views, the right. And um, a lot of the time, as a Christian, even the right doesn't line up with Christian views. Can we agree on that? So, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme, and we'll pause there. So, whether it's the current, we don't have emperor, we have a president. So, whether it's the current president or the former president or the one before him, whether we agree with them or not, we are to be subject. Or to the people that are appointed by him, says, or the governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. So whether it be him, the president, emperor, or those that he has appointed, we are to be subject. What are you getting at? This is what we're getting at, is if we think and believe in a God that is just sovereign over everything, then we're going to trust in him for everything. Peter, Peter is writing this, having the knowledge of his emperor, Nero, which was killing Christians. They were being hunted down for their faith. And he is saying, submit to that guy. The guy that's coming after us, submit to him. We may not like, again, who is in office, or we may, but Peter is saying, this is Peter, the, the guy, we talked about this when we got started in Peter, right? This, this dude... Sorry for the word, but he chopped an ear off of someone. After just being with Christ himself, he goes and... And then declaring, Jesus, I will never leave you. I'm by your side. Denies him three times. But Jesus brings him back. And so this is the Peter that is saying, be subject. There is, and, and, and here's what it comes down to, is there, there, there is order, and, and there is all of these systems in place that we depend on. Anarchy is not an option. Not for the Christian. Because, again, if we go back to God being overall, 
He has placed these systems in place for our own good. And we have to, we have to trust in him and his sovereign will in placing those things in order for us. Now we have our rights to, you know, to vote this way or that. And, and we, we have been, by our country that we live in, have been given a voice. Sometimes it doesn't feel like much of a voice. But still, we have the capacity to cause change. And we should participate in that. But when the outcome is there, Peter says, be subject. Or to the governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. There are exceptions if we think of Nazi Germany that we can go against that sort of thing. And there's, there, there are martyrs and there are great stories about people that stood up to that movement. But, be subject, Peter says. For, verse 15, for this is the will of God. Man, that doesn't feel right sometimes, you know? It's, I don't agree with the guy. Have you seen how he carries himself? Oh, I don't know. He just, I think over the last, you know, since the, since the 70s, 60s, 50s on, there are all kind of controversy that's tied in with presidents. Not just the left, not just the right. There's a big old mess. For this is the will of God. Be subject. That by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Do you remember last week we talked about how we should carry ourselves in such a way that those that come against us, those that accuse us, those that say, oh, those bigots, those Christians, they are so close-minded, they are so warped in their thinking that by our actions, we don't have to defend ourselves. You know, we don't have to go to the front line and say, come on, you know, I'm going to... No, we don't need to defend ourselves in that way by our actions, the way that we carry ourselves, the things that we say, the things that we do, the things that we participate in, the things that we back, that will speak volumes to those accusations, so much so that the accusers will say, praise God. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free. Not using freedom as a cover-up for evil. Let's not be pretenders. I know what it is to be a pretender. I come from a family. My dad is a pastor, has been a pastor as long as I can remember. Ministry family. And I knew the right things to say. I knew how to shake a hand properly, what not to say within the building. Peter is saying, live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. That's a high calling that he's laying out there. Don't be pretenders, Peter is saying. Well, I got good friends over there at the church. 
You know, and I, I don't know that I want to stop going to church, but man, that pastor, he, he just wants to put us to work. It takes work. It takes all of us. We can't. We, we will, if we want to run on our pretender energy, it will run out quick. We need to be led by the Spirit of God. And we need to obey. Um, I left my Bible over there. But the psalm that I, that I was reading earlier, um, well, I'll speak on it again. But we can't. We can't do God's work in, in just our own understanding. We can't. We have to buy into this fully. I was counseling a guy once that um, kept falling off the wagon. He'd come to church, and um, and he, they they had the marriage. They had a, a troubled life. They they just it was rough, but. It wasn't a partnership in the sense that um, they were still holding on to their rights. And the last time that I met with the guy, he says to me, after again messing up, he says, man, this Christian thing, you really have to buy in all the way, don't you? We do. We either fully believe it, like the gravity thing that I talked about a few weeks ago, or, or we just don't believe in it at all. And that determines our eternity. It's a big deal. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. These aren't his last words, but it kind of feels, that it has that kind of a feel like, okay, I've got a few more things to say to you. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. We can only do these other three things, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, and honor the emperor, if we fear God. And it's not like this trembling, like this shaking fear. No, it's, it, it comes out of our love for him. And it goes against, again, every, that voice, the voices out there. It goes against the culture. Culture says, fight. Fight for your rights. There was a flashback there. Sorry. We want to love those that are easy to love and get along with those that are easy to get along you, all you need to do is go to Facebook and see the wisdom of the world and you'll see, oh, drop them, you know, you think positively and you know, the easy road. There's too much negativ negativity over it. Don't, don't, why are you hanging out with that person? We're to love our enemies. Love those that are hard to love. Listen, I... The Lord is working on me, but there are times when I want to put my dukes up and cut me off. The drive up to Kansas <laughs> just this past week. <sighs> it's hard. It is difficult, and we, we can't do it. It's impossible to do it by ourselves. It's only through God's strength. I mean, it needs to be a continued... This is a fight. It's not just against the culture. 
there are voices in here that say, man, we want that piece of chocolate cake, you know? I mean, what's 10 miles over the speed limit, really? It's a high calling. And it is impossible on our own strength. So we have to daily, moment by moment, submit and call upon the Lord for our strength. Man, I don't want to volunteer with the youth. I've volunteered with the youth, you know, my early years in ministry. Those kids, man, they throw all kind of stuff in that room. And if you're not careful, those little ones especially, those Rodriguez kids, you better watch out. It is a high calling. And, and it's a, a, a sacrifice, but it's not really a sacrifice. We, we, we are putting to death our own selfishness our self-centeredness, our preferences to continue the mission. We have to put to death the flesh on a daily basis and allow the Lord to work in us. That's the only way we can accomplish the mission. That's sometimes the only way that we can honor the emperor. But we are to be subject and honor everyone. In Mark, um, and I'll close with this, Mark chapter 12, verses 13 through 17. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. We're talking about Jesus. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion. For you are not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? They're trying to set him up. Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, they, they were bringing on some, some worship on them, their, some praise on them. Oh, you're such a good teacher, man. Come on, tell us. Should we pay our taxes? Yes or no? But there's, there's, vo- there's ears listening to what his answer is going to be. Trying to set him up. Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. And they brought one and he said to them, whose likeness and inscription is in this? And they said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. So what is Caesar's? We talked about these systems are in place because God has ordained it. But in the grand scheme of things, everything is God's. In this case, God has allowed certain people to be our leaders. And so, at the same time, even though all is God, these things have been set aside and this system works in this way because God has ordained it. And so what should we do? We continue our work. We continue to listen. We continue to worship the Lord. We continue to do what we've been called to do because, again, the Bible, the language in the Bible says we are sojourners and exiles. As a part of this body, as a part of this family, this royal priesthood, 
We've been called to something else. Nero is going to do what he's going to do. We are going to be obedient to what we've been called to do. So, honor everyone. Sometimes what the Bible has to say just does not feel good. (laughs) But we are to be obedient. Because if we leave it up to ourselves, where my God, man, I don't think God would ask me to do that. We that's subjective. We cannot form our own opinion of who God is. So we obey. And we keep going forward. We move with the mission. We keep doing what we've been called to do. And allow and trust. This is where that trust word comes in. Trust that God has got everything under control. Nothing surprises him. Not a natural disaster. Not some crazy lunatic shooting somebody up in a, in a theater. Nothing surprises him. And so, we need to be faithful with our mission. And allow God to do what he's going to do. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for, um, for including us in your plans, God. We're so honored and humbled that we, although imperfect, are entrusted with this, this message. The greatest treasure, we possess it that you allow us to share that with others, God. We thank you. We ask for your forgiveness when we mess it up, when we don't get it right. And we ask that you would give us discernment, Lord, and take every opportunity that is given to us so that we can tell people about you. Help us and to be obedient to the things that you have called us to do. And this week's lesson, to honor. Lord, we can't do it in our own strength sometimes. We can't ever do it in our own strength. So we ask that your Holy Spirit would give us discernment and give us that strength. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.